Bowls Australia acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land in which this stream is produced. We pay our respects to all First Nations people and acknowledge Elders past and present. It is set up to be a massive day here at the Broad Beach Bowls Club and the women's pairs for Australia is sitting very precariously. Christina Christick and Alan Ryan on the verge of possible elimination sitting in third in their section with three matches to go. It is poised to be a monumental afternoon for them and they'll be relying on Malta to possibly drop matches out of their contest later on Today, this is Ringside Live. Val Febo here with you at the Broad Beach Bowls Club. Today is the penultimate day of the sectional rounds, or the final day of sectional rounds for the 2023 World Bowls Championships kicks off Barry Lester. Right at home, Jackaroo, the one and only Mr. Lester, joins me. Best, uh, best seat in the house here, Val. Wow, it's uh, what a beautiful morning here. I know we say that a lot, but... Yesterday was spectacular over at Club Helens Farm, but this morning, Broad Beach, you can just get a little bit of a smell off that sea breeze coming in off the ocean. Ocean only being about 100 metres away. What a great location to be playing bowls. And these players from all around the world, uh, absolutely spoiled out here. Perfect greens, perfect conditions, and oceanside bowling. The horn has gone off, so it'll be Australia versus Hong Kong, so... Christina Christick and Ellen Ryan up against Angel So and Helen Chung, who we covered in the women's fours last week. They were the third and fourth of the uh, of that quartet, and we're going to keep a close eye on all of the matches today, and especially Malta versus Switzerland this morning. Marianne Kunzler and Lara Butler up against the Rickson sisters, Connie and Rebecca. Of course, that match will play a massive role on how Australia sits in their group. Chrissy and Allen sitting precariously in third, three wins and two losses, a point behind Malta on three wins, one loss and a draw. So that draw between Malta and Zimbabwe is at the moment paying dividends for them. Chrissy and Allen, however, will just need to buckle down and get themselves sorted. They were praying to the bowls gods this morning. Yeah, definitely value. You. Yeah, you've got to. It's a, it's an interesting one. You know, you've got an immediate job at hand, which is to try and come out and play well here today in this game. And sometimes all the external stuff, you just got to block it out. You would have assessed it last night. They would have went home and, and knew where they sit on the ladder in terms of the the group stages. But all in all, what will be will be around them. And the thing about that is, you're going to be glancing around at times, and you don't want to get. stuck stuck into that every now and then you might take a little glance but you still know that you've got a job in hand as Christina comes down draws a beautiful shot so we're playing in the east west direction uh, both players currently uh, both teams currently playing into the east side now but the sun rises over these tall beautiful high rises here at Broad Beach Bowls Club and the bottom green here at Broad Beach right now is fully covered in shadow but green two, as you see, is open, and so is green one. But green speed just, for me, just on about 14 and a half to 15 seconds. L tiny little bit of surface moisture from a little bit of overnight dew. And I haven't found out categorically or not, but there is some grass clippings I've noticed being picked up on the back of some bowls. So they may have gave, given the green another beautiful shot from Chrissy. It might have given the green either a light shave this morning. They did. They did, yeah. So very, very little. You're talking, yeah, probably just the lightest of shaves because there's really not much growth at the moment because of the current weather conditions. But this this direction isn't something that these, particularly Australia, um, play a lot of on this green, mainly north-south. So uh, east-west isn't the most uh, common direction to play on green too. But um, as you can see there, Chris has adjusted well. And you've got two bowls inside a foot there. These two great friends, desperate to 
strut their stuff in the knockout stages. And yesterday's loss against England was definitely, definitely hampering or will definitely hamper their hopes. But they played really well and they can take positives from that match against Amy Farrow and Sophie Tolchard. It was a great one to be a part of. Again, Barry, it definitely lived up to the hype. The margin definitely didn't reflect what uh, didn't reflect what the score or what the, what the game was like. That's right. Very strategic game in the end, as we saw, Val. A lot of weighted shots, um, definitely from both skips. And it was a really tough battle of the leads. Helen Chung, well, she's clipping. Well, that might be enough to get third. It is. Yeah, um, we saw Amy Farrow there. A couple of big conversions. Um, some, some, a great save from Alan Ryan. What was that, about four ends to play when she was four or five down, Val? And you called it. You said if Alan hadn't drawn that, that was pretty much curtains. Yep. So Alan came up with a big one there. And, and Sophie Tolchard, well, a big moment in the game was when she switched hands. Early on, yeah. uh, that chat. Communication and I, is key. I spoke to Sophie this morning just briefly, and I just said, if you don't mind me asking... When you had that chat with uh, Amy around that third or fourth end mark, were you talking about swapping hands? She said that's pretty much all we spoke about. So um, it was good to just get some intel there because those are the, the key components to playing team events. Having those team chats is Helen, she's close for the jack here. Well, she's kicked it out. Spilt it out and then she's come back. She's actually hit that jack twice and I reckon she'd be close to holding. Yeah, a couple of big... You know, sort of conversion shots from Helen there. Touch her. Well, Helen Ryan, she might be one down here. Two up to one down. Not the best situated head here for her. Helen Chung, we saw her last week in the women's fours. She can play some absolutely brilliant bowls and is a very good player. Definitely nothing to be sneezed at. They're only a win behind the Australians on, on the ladder. Shot difference, of course, is fairly substantial, but they are a formidable foe, the Hong Kong-China pair. Yeah, having spent more time out here recently, uh, multi-nations. Uh, hey a, a couple of Hong Kong players right. came out. Helen Ryan with weight. She's played it well. She's definitely contacted the shot, or well, what we was, thought was the shot bowl. She do, she's still one down. She almost did enough there. Was it a good little air? And I think Alan will take a lot of positives from that, I reckon. Just yeah. to say, I was in the air. I might not have got it, but, geez, I was close. Yeah, good call, Val. That's right. Early on, you want to, um, as much as you want to settle into a rhythm, ideally, if you can play a couple of big shots early, it's huge for your confidence. But what we're going to definitely see here for our viewers, we just want to really emphasise on this particular direction. You're going to see some sharp turn. So... On a couple of these hands, you're really going to see some bowls turn sharply in towards the head. And it's it's not that common for this pace, but the way this, this uh, in this particular direction, the way the um, green set up, there is some hands here that turn quite sharply. And you see, saw Alan there get back with ease into that head. So um, usually most grass greens at this speed won't have that really um, sharp turn. It'll be a bit more of a flatter finish, but... Uh, that, that just comes back to the grain and the way the grass has grown here. Um, so the Australian, sorry, Baz, will get to dictate the length. We've lost a jack already. So clear plan there for Hong Kong trying to try and go long, just spilling the jack into the ditch. And Australia, mat on the tee and jack length, 24 metres. So very short length, this one. Joe Franzi, good morning. Baz and Val, listening to your outstanding commentary while watching and undertaking my marshalling duties between Green 1 and 2 Go Aussies. And we can see Joe out there just setting things up. And he's a good man. He's a good Tigers man. Baz, and I know you're going to start to get very <laughs> jittery throughout the day as Melbourne and Collingwood kick off the AFL final oh, series tonight. Yeah, it's hard not to concentrate uh, too much on tonight's game. I'm, uh, as you know, I'm a huge Football fan, soccer, that is. Um, I love the f fact that it's not heavily adjudicated um, and you don't hear from the umpires. I do struggle with the AFL at the moment. To, oh, it's to, to hear from the umpires, it's uh, it's something that turns me off the game. But stand, I, uh, I will be pressing the mute button a fair few times tonight and probably trying to not let it uh, consume me too much. But, yeah, go the Ds, go the mighty Ds, and um, hopefully it's a cracker match. And 
unfortunately, it might be hampered by the weather. Yeah, apparently pretty uh, pretty gloomy down there in Melbourne as Christina Christick. This is a good battle already, yeah. Val. We're seeing from both leads, all four bowls right down the middle there. So beautiful, calm conditions. Flags aren't even moving an inch. What has Angel so got in reply? It's going past. So Christina Christick, this is a really important match and it cannot be understated. We'll keep bringing you updates about what's happening between Malta and Switzerland because that match is going to have a lot of sway on what happens here. Malta will also play Fiji, who are looking for their, their own spot in the knockout stage, so that will be a tough one. Yeah, as we see, Val, just want to keep touching on the fact that the, this, this section really relies now on a lot of different results, and it's going to be easy for the players' minds and concentration to, to shift, and it's something that these players... This morning would have probably no doubt spoken to with their coaches and said, listen, hey, let's just stay focused on our rink. Let's do our job and not try to, you know, start glancing around to other rinks. And But sometimes it is good to, if you're struggling in a game or you are a little bit um, built up in it with emotion, sometimes it is good to get away from the rink, maybe go and get a drink of water or just go and take a few deep breaths. Uh, maybe go and uh, yeah, just go to your bag and get some grippo or something like that. Yeah. But in this particular moment today, the players don't want to have any, uh, create any unwanted f pressures from the outside rings because as you can see, they're all right on top of each other. Every, all four rings are right next to each and other. You're going to look up, you're going to glance, you're going to see score lines, but Lachlan Williams has just typed in one of the most famous coach adages that there is, and that's control the controllables. Wow, like it. Yes, that's so true. Thanks, Lock. Keep them coming, mate. Alan Chung, well... It's going past, so Australia holding sway at the moment. And Mertens, or Martin, sorry, watching from her hospital bed in Canberra. We hope you're going okay, Anne. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope that we can give you some sort of respite and some sort of comfort in what could be an uncomfortable time. Yeah, how good are some of those uh, great quotes that some athletes stick by? Is it that? you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? <laughs> I've got quite a few favourites. Uh, you know, I try to use them for different points, different moments, and then I try to try to draw off inspiration from other athletes in the way they how they go away um, and come back from hardships. Hayley Rasso, for me, her story it was documented during the recent Matildas, but I remember hearing about it three or four years ago, or two or three years ago, and to come back from a broken back and uh, get out there and represent Australia for the Matildas. Well. It just doesn't get much better than that. Yep. Pretty unbelievable. Barbara Walk asking where she can watch. Well, right here, Facebook Live. You are watching us. So and keep tuned in. So Alan Ryan, I think she'll be, yes, she is on the forehand. Just doesn't want jack movement, even though she's holding what seems to be one, maybe two. Safer hand is forehand. Just want to focus on the, the angle of this bowl coming in here how sharp this turn will be. As you can see, it drifting across nicely. Is it there? I think oh. it's done enough, maybe. It's close. One kicked out here by Angel So. Now, as we wait for this measure, Martin Bailey asking uh, how many from the sections qualify for the quarterfinals. It's two from every section. So, yes, you're right, England's. Uh, Amy Farrow and Sophie, Sophie Tolchard, they are sitting pretty well on top of the group at the moment. They are unbeaten, five wins, zero losses, almost through, not quite yet. So Australia, pick up a two. And a good start. Just noticing the there, Val, Australia, uh, sorry, Hong Kong, China lost the mat, or lost the jack. Yep. Australia went minimum, 23, 24 metres. And Hong Kong, China never had one short bowl. They all glided past. So there's just an indication that Australia really trying to um, focus on playing a real touch game here. It's always touch, but as the end gets longer and the greens get slower, it does create an element of pushing and, and shoving and more of a body weight 
uh, a body weight length, but when it comes to a 14 and a half, 15 second green like this at Broad Beach and you're playing minimum length, it is really touch and tempo and, and Australia's going to test Hong Kong China with that. They certainly are and we saw that in the women's fours the other day. They went for those shorter lengths and certainly worked. That was an epic contest there and very much looking forward to seeing what the Australians can do today. Malta and Switzerland, we're going to continue to bring you updates there. The Rickson sisters, Connie and Rebecca up against Marianne Kunzler and Lara Butler. Maiden name Mertz. You may know her from previous competitions like the AO. It's Malta leading 3-1 after two at the moment. Christina Christic, look at those lead bowls. And yesterday it was the tail of the tape between Australia and England. We saw that the importance of the battle between Sophie Tolchard and Christina Christic. And when one looked to be on top, that resonated with the skips converting. And yesterday there was that middle portion of the match where Australia scored five ones in a row and Chrissy led superbly. And then Sophie just switched it up a little bit and, and got the job done, beat Chrissy in one end, and all of a sudden they score a five. Yeah, if you take that multiple away, even though it was a well-earned multiple by England, uh, you know, the, the result does change. But the thing about Amy Farrow on that particular end, she went for it, she got rewarded, kicked the jack back, and England picked up five. And sometimes, and I'll probably focus on it, uh, probably not too much, but a lot, and that's just about those bowls of Sophie's, they might not have been right on the jack, and, and that's okay because it's hard to do end after end as a lead. But Sophie's bowls were that sort of yard to three foot behind and they end up being counters. And that's the beauty of, you know, this game. If you're giving your bowls a chance, putting them in those good areas. And, and if you're someone that struggles to reach easy, that's where you'll see with these players, as I touch on their deliveries and their techniques, you see a lot of body weight now. It's, it's definitely uh, the modern way of going about delivering a bowl. And you said, Val, the other day, and I, I really... Uh, I really was impressed with the way you went about it because it was so true. You said how players are now watching people on TV and then sort of following how they go about it as opposed to I followed Glasson and so on growing yeah. up. Now, you'll see someone like Alan Ryan, okay, heavily heavily involved with the pendulum, but that look at this big forward body launch and the weight goes forward. Now, we were told 25 years ago to stay down. You know, we were told to stay down and, and not push forward. Well, the modern day of, of playing is just that the body weight bowl, bowling delivery is here. And it's here to stay because yeah. these players are playing on various conditions, slow, quick, indoor, outdoor now, and they need all the help they can get. And Alan Ryan would have watched other players growing up. Um, and you see that sheriffs and the, these kind of players on TV, they're all forward momentum body weight players, and, and it is the modern delivery. Yeah, Aaron Sheriff is a, a prominent uh, exhibitor of that. And you can see where, you know, he just comes forward straight away. Aaron Wilson as well. Both of them very forthright when they're on the mat. And if it works for you, it doesn't matter. It's, as long as it's a legal delivery. Well, under the jack. She spat the jack out there, Alan Ryan. Nice conversion. Well, Helen Chung now has about four feet of room for shot. Offline jack. More weight required. These are the... These are the can be tricky sometimes, especially early in a match when you're still trying to get a feel for the game and feel for the rink. And yes, Robert, it was a three. We just missed the signal. They were very quick about it, but um, it is uh, it is it was a three in the second end. So thank you for that. We've uh, sorted that one out on the scoreboard. <coughs> bit of cloud cover today, which we are in a bit of a danger spot today. Baz, with where we're positioned, the sun can come through. So, fingers crossed the clouds maybe stay just in front of the sun. So, you're telling me I might have to wear a hat and mess my hair up, Val? Nothing can mess your hair up, Barry. <laughs> it is beautiful any, any time of the day, I reckon. As we saw there, and I did mention it, it's never easy early on in a match. You're just trying to get a feel for the rink and you're trying to ideally sort of just play down the middle all the time. But you've got an offline jack and a different weight and... 
Ellen Ryan's played it well. Helen Chung, well, she's got to, yeah, just widen up here. The idea is not to focus on the jack, just play a high line, even if you finish two feet high. As we are getting a few comments about why we are streaming so many Australian matches. Well, we are Bowls Australia, so that, uh, that's one. <laughs> and two, we are also providing a secondary stream. The Gold Coast Tweed District uh, group are doing a wonderful job and uh, they're also providing three streams a day. So we're giving you six streams a day, three of which are predominantly Australian or mostly Australian. I think we've done two non-Aussie matches, but then the others all international and all up for grabs. Yeah, well said. Well said, Val. So Australia with a... One there. One there. So Yeah, Helen Chung, great correction with her weight, just missing under the line. And that's that sharp turn I mentioned. You'll see some beautiful sharp turning hands here on this particular direction, Green 2, the home of the gold medal matches back in 2018 for the yes. Commonwealth Games where we saw the Aussies pick up plenty of medals. And uh, down on the Green 3, we've got Aaron Wilson in action. He's uh, playing in the shadows at the moment and... As I look around, I've been playing at Broadbeach now for close to, oh, I'll be over, over 10 years. There would be at least a half a dozen new buildings in the area. So it just adds to the shadows and yep. to the characteristics of the Gold Coast here in Broadbeach Bowls Club. Christina Christie starts well and the little applause starting to echo around the Broadbeach Bowls Club. And you're right, Baz, there are new buildings going up everywhere. We're looking directly opposite us. I think there's a new establishment that's going to be built, a new apartment block, and even to our left. And it is great to see more more people are going to be living right next to the Broad Beach Bowls Club, which is more exposure to the sport, which is what we want. Yeah, of course, the World Championships, what a tournament it has been so far. We've awarded seven gold medals. There are four to go. And Saturday and Sunday, Barry Lester, you are going to be at the forefront of it all on the television broadcast on Fox, KO, Sky Sports, NZ. Speaking of at the forefront, Chrissy at the forefront of this head. Yeah, so the sharp turn, a good example of sharp turn if you're not looking at the actual bowl coming down the green. You can see the angle the bowls are finishing on. So as the bowl actually stops, the full face of the bowl is nearly back towards the player. And you can see the line that this is coming in from for Angel. So... And that'll get back, no worries at all. Just slightly high, but it was on a, a high line. And they're going to get back even more in the next hour or two as this green just frees up a touch. But that's a great player comfort. You've got to be able to trust the draw, keep sending it out, and let the bowl do the work. Christina Christick and Angel So. Chrissy winning the lead battle at the moment. And Angel So, we saw her last week. She can work her way into the contest. Yeah, a bit unfortunate from Chrissy, just trying to put another one in there. Spat the jack back. Angel So yeah. now got a, about a yard of room to count. She's going to pull up slightly short. Might be enough, but could be in Alan Ryan's way. So Alan yeah. now has to. Shift her focus and just draw to the area, probably somewhere between halfway between the jack and the blue ball over there on the line. Yeah, it was unfortunate that she did spill the jack out, but she's been in the area and I don't think she'll mind that too much. You know, even if they do drop a one, it doesn't really matter as long as you're bowling well. I think you can afford to sort of cop those end losses. You just got to remain positive. Like England did yesterday, dropped a five or dropped five ones in a row, remained positive, and immediately got that back in one end. Yeah, nice shot from Alan Ryan, just playing under that front bowl on the way in of Angel Sows. Don't think she got shot. It's close. So, Helen Chung, she's out on a lovely line here. Can she turn this front bowl up? If not, clear for a counter. Well, any turn, she should get rewarded. I think that's enough. We've got a perfect 90-degree angle of this head right now, Barry. <coughs> and certainly doesn't look too bad. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. So it is going to be the forehand for Alan Ryan. I 
think Allen here, if she doesn't draw it, if she slides past, which she's doing, she now wins the tee, and that'll create an op- another option for her with her last. Allen, I think she's got a few options down there on the back end looking to promote her own bowls or kick the jack out of there. And Helen needs to be aware of that. She needs to be getting something back too, I believe. Playing that game of chess, Barry. Helen Chung. Sit through. It just goes past. But there's a sea of blue bowls in the head here. Alan Ryan has gone past. She does have the back bowl. She does have the tee. Yeah, I think just with the weight of numbers, Alan can play this with confidence. Backhand, looking for the jack. Try and track. So the key to this shot is here, if you are playing weight, if you are high and you get any of the red balls, where are they going to finish if you hit them? So if you go really quick and you're high, the red balls leave the green. If you go solid weight and and play enough weight that they hang around, but Alan's going to try and dead draw this on the forehand as opposed to playing weight on her backhand. There is a bit of room for her there if she gets on a nice line. And Ryan, I think she's tight. So happy to just to be one down there, Alan. Was a little bit of danger involved, but all in all, one down's all right. Can Helen Chung pop in another? Let's see if she can get Hong Kong another foothold into this contest and get them within one. It's coming around. It is not a bad effort at all. Wait for the confirmation here. Missed the finger signal there. I think it was two in the end. So Hong Kong. Move to within one. 4-3 in favour of Chris Dick and Ryan, who, well, it's not in their hands anymore at the moment. They need to rely on other results. And that result is Malta against Switzerland and Currently, it is Malta leading 3-1. As Lara Butler tries to chase yeah, one ch- in, she needs it to run. Big jog after it down there, down the green. Of course, Fiji also play Malta later on. And the Fijians are also well and truly in this section, so <laughs> there's plenty of permutations for a loss. Malta might be leading a little bit more than 3-1 as they bowled first in this end. So Jack length, 28 metres here. Christina Christic on the backhand, forced to play backhand with that front bowl of Angel Sows. So a bit of a new look for Chrissy here in this direction. Just that extra length. Both players pulling up a yard to four foot short. Good line there from Chrissy. She can... Uh, Gain a lot from that. Just to, When you're playing good lines all day, you'll find players, they will adjust the weight fairly quickly. What you, don't, what, what you don't want to be doing is still guessing your line four and five ends into a game of bowls. Really make the most of your roll-up. Find your line. Ideally, start wide, bring your way in. The beauty of starting wide and bringing yourself in is because you've experienced the widest part of the rink. If you throw your first four or five bowls down in a roll-up or in a game and you're narrow, what you're left wondering is what you need to do to go out. And it's much easier, in my opinion, from t- to go out, feel the full draw, the full experience of the rink and work your way in. Same with your weight. In a roll-up, play a few heavy bowls, get a few bowls back and long, and then bring work your way back and know what the full experience of not only your line is, but the full experience of what it takes to get to the other end. So really make the most of your roll-ups. And as you see there, Chrissy just making a nice correction, adding a couple of feet, but backing herself on that wide drawing hand. So Amy Farrow puts in a beautiful one right in front of us here, and Malta lead 5-1 over the Swiss duo of Kunzler and Butler. So the Rickson sisters, bronze medalists, right here at Broadbeach in 2018. Great shot, Angel. So, wow. Well, 
like the Juice Newton song, Baz, she does her best work in the morning. That's a huge correction. Uh, two bowls, sort of four to six foot short, both on the forehand, switching to the backhand and absolutely plays a cracker. So Christina Christic's number one job now is to get past. The percentages say that the way this head is shaped up, there's going to be weight played by Alan Ryan, which means that Alan, Christina needs to get back. As we see, Angel So here, backing herself, switching hands over to the backhand and draws the shot a couple of inches short. Magnificent. Beautiful bowl. A clutch bowl for a lead. And we we don't say that very often for a lead, a clutch bowl, but that is as good as it gets in terms of switching hands and and adding the actual weight under pressure too. 100%. And Peter, we get asking... Could I please ask how the Swiss team has been able to play on Swiss and was never able to locate a Lawn Boss facility in Switzerland? Thankful for some info if someone knows. Well, I can give you the story about Lara Butler. Now, her father, I think, has played for Switzerland, but also I think she has a Swiss passport. Yeah, she grew up grew up till she was seven in Switzerland. Yes. Yep. So she has a Swiss pa- uh, passport, but you can chat to World Bo- Bowls for more info as well and they'll be able to pass on. I know CEO Neil Dalrymple was in Gestad recently in Switzerland. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure, now I'm happy to be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that all of the Spanish team live in England. Yes. So, oh, no, they li- they were from England but live in Spain. Sorry, yes. Yeah, that's correct. So they're, they're all living in Spain um, but from England. So what what we're – and that is – and that happens in so many sports. It's probably not well documented. Like we look at Australia's – well, what, one of our most successful – as this comes down from Helen Chook, one of our most successful Olympic athletes of recent times, Jessica Fox. Um, you know, it's it's probably not well known, but, you know, she's an absolute Aussie legend. But I think she moved out to Australia from France when she was 12. Yes. Oh, I think maybe earlier, possibly. Yeah. So I'm not sure. About but 10 or 12 years of age. So Still has a residence in France. Correct. And, and we, you know, she's an Australian you know, residing Australian, proud Aussie athlete. And, okay, she, she moved out here when she was uh, 10 years of age from France. Her mum and dad represented, I think, England and France in in the same sport. But it's just so great to see that um, once once the opportunity is provided, um, it's, it's what it's all about. We want to just see participation, don't we, Val? We just want to see people giving the sport a go, getting out there and representing their countries. As we see, Alan Ryan needs some contact onto the jack. We're just missing under. And, and yeah, we do. And you, you harp on, or you talk about tennis as well. Daria Saville, um, you know, she was born in Russia, came out here, changed her, changed her nation. Um, Isla Tomjanovic as well, born in Croatia, lives in America now, but still represents Australia. Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie Irving was born in Melbourne, left yep. Australia when he was two years of age. One of the best NBA basketballs of the last 10 to 15 years. And technically, he could... He could represent Australia in in basketball. I think he should. He chooses to represent America, um, but I think yeah, that's it's disrespectful. <laughs> um, and also Usman Khawaja, born yes. in Pakistan. So it's great to see um, Ben Stokes represents England in cricket. Left New Zealand when he was about ten years of age. So it's uh, please if if you can if you if you're interested, well spot on Val Alan Ryan looking for the jack here. What a shot, Alan Ryan. Magnificent. And Australia, I think there's still one down. Yeah, cutting back. Not but going with it, but um, just on that, Val, well said. Yeah, if you want to get involved, contact World Bowls and yeah, participation, inclusion. That's what we're all about. We want to see people enjoying this wonderful sport. And, and if you're eligible, why not? So, for a piece here, Hong Kong, China. As we suspected, Barry Lester, they are well and truly up for this fight. They are a formidable opponent. Alan Ryan cutting that down, getting a big applause here from the Broad Beach parochial fans. They are a very loud supporter base here when the Aussies come and during the Australian Open as well. They just appreciate good bowls. And there was that men's pairs quarterfinal date where we saw some epics on green one. People about four, four deep, the crowd. Oh. Standing, watching all around us. We had no view of the green. Yeah, it was hard, wasn't it? No, it was. And what a location. What I love also, Val, is you see people walking past just out for their morning coffee, going to the beach, walking the dog. 
and they walk into the grounds and pull up a chair and they end up sitting around for an hour yeah. watching the action. And, you know, the way the game's exposed to the, uh, to the public here in terms of Broad Beach Bowls Club, what I love about the facilities here at Broad Beach, and it's a bit of a bugbear for me, Val, is they haven't built a big wall or a big fence sort of saying, you know, <laughs> you can't come in. Yeah, um, come in, have fe- a roll, have fence, a look. Yeah, the fence is just over probably belly button to sort of low, low chest height. You can lean on the fence, you can lean over and look and watch. We're seeing people now leaning over the fence and watching bowls. Uh, the, the Probably the busiest part of the, the, the road, uh, sorry, the club here is probably this west section, this west road. And that fence there, it's, it's just over hip height. So you can just walk up, lean over, watch the action and we see people every day. So that's great for the game and great for people to see bowls maybe for the first time and, and they know that Essentially, they can come in and grab a barefoot, barefoot set of barefoot bowls and give it a go. 100%. Well said, Barry Lester. That's exactly what we want to see. More people involved in this sport. More so, people getting around it worldwide. Ditch, ditch. 36, 36 metre length. Angel So winning the battle so far. On the backhand. Got to her... Nearest ball would be about two and a half feet away. Needs this one to run. Needs to hurry. Well, that's enough. That's the boss. Call just call that Barry. Christina Christic. Well, not bad attempt so far. Just uh, probably probably matching the back bowl is the key here, just to give that bowl a bit of a chance. Slide off the front, trail She's the jack back. She's not far away, Christina Christic just slides through the gap, but good effort and a good home for Alan Ryan to work with. So this is a tense game for the Aussies. It's an all-important one for them because they just need to keep winning now and... Switzerland have won an end against Malta, but they've lost the jack, so Malta will control the length over there on the rink next door. So the Aussies will have a good idea of what's happening in that contest, but obviously, Barry, as we discussed before, not yeah. looking and not worrying about those results too much is probably the most beneficial things for most beneficial thing for the Australians. Just focus on what they're doing on their rink. And then Locke was quick to remind us as well, that famous quote. Controller controllables. Who, uh, whose quote was it? There's, I think, many people that have said it. Right. I think a lot of coaches use it. <laughs> Control the controllable. So true. One of my favourites is the river cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. Oh, yeah. Don't mind that. And that's what these players are experiencing over the two weeks, just persisting day after day, game after game. Just trying to stick at it, keep keep trying their best, hoping that it's enough to get the job done. And at the end of that, well, on the other side of that rock, Barry, is a gold medal opportunity. And if you can burst through the rock, you can get one. That's what they're trying to do, Val. Alan Ryan here on the backhand, jogging down after this. Might be able to get two or three, Barry. Sit the yeah, <laughs> sit the bowl, trail the jack. She's close here. Alan Ryan needs to get down. Just moving past, but she again. cut a few out. Well, she might be still three down. I think she is. So it is three to Hong Kong, China, as it sits. Alan Ryan, one bullet left in the gun. As Helen Chung just pauses, listens to her lead, taking in all the information. As we see here, Helen Chung is a long way away from where the camera angle is. It's 36 metres of length, ditch to ditch. On the backhand, nice high drawing line. Amy's clapping it in. Well, that should be enough to count. Well, that's going to be four shots to Hong Kong, China. With so, Alan Ryan, one to come. So not so her last bowl was very close, Alan Ryan. This one, well, it just simply needs to be good because 
They need to remain in this contest. They need to remain strong and just keep pushing because wins are now all that matters for the Aussies. The Ricks and Sisters, they're updating the scores every two ends over there, so we'll bring you an update soon. The skips are over at the far end, so after this end, I'm sure that score will be updated. The Rickson's holding one or two. Martin got uh, sorry. Martin's asked the question, Baz. Um, in the UK, Taylor bowls have seven different bias bowls of various names. Do you have a similar choice per brand in the Southern Hemisphere? Uh, uh, well, I'm I'm sponsored by uh, Aero Bowls, as you know, Val. Yep. Uh, I'm very lucky that I play a lot of bowls on the Gold Coast, and when the conditions change, I've got a few different biases in in the boot of my car. So. Um, for me, indoor carpet, wide drawing bowls, definitely. Uh, love the fact that I can, as Alan Ryan, big moment in the match. Close. This is huge from Alan Ryan, and she has got it. That, at the moment, the shot of the morning. Four down to one up. That shot essentially has scored five. Yeah. Clutch play here. Backing the draw, backing to just get close, and pretty much going back to be, just being a lead. Open jack, forget the elements, forget the condition. Four down, six down, ten down, doesn't matter. You've just got to play to the shot that presents itself, and that's a bear jack, a dead draw, Alan Ryan, clutch play. So that is a massive bolt because Hong Kong were on the verge of a special start. 18 ends, of course, what we're playing to. Yeah, sorry, Val, just yeah, just with that question, um, what players of all um, that use any manufacturer in Australia, whether it be Greenmaster, Henselot, Taylor, Aero, so on, what they'll look to do is have a set of bowls that sort of combats um, all conditions, so a me pretty much a medium bias bowl. And when people ask me what line should they use, the best way of judging what line you should use and whatever manufacturer you choose to use is to find a line that, that is best for the average speed you will play on. Now, you might play on 18 seconds indoor, you might play on 12 seconds outdoor, you might play various speeds, but you just you can't have a set of bowl. Well, you can if you if you can afford it, but... Ideally, you just get one set of bowls that can like, play well on the average conditions you'll play in across a 12-month period. Great analysis and great knowledge by the one and only Barry Lester, who will join me for one more day of oh, ringside really? live action. I know, I'm getting, I'm getting very sad, Baz. I think there may be some tears tomorrow afternoon. I'll have to ring you next week on Monday morning and... Just well, you won't be able to get me Monday, mate. I'll be on the golf course. Well, that's a bit rude. <laughs> just answer my call anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay, mate. No, it's been a great couple of weeks. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, thank you to everyone tuning in. We're just trying to analyse the game best to our ability and give you a sense of feeling like you're out there and a part of it. And uh, I know when I watch sport, I just feel, I want to feel like I'm there. I want to feel like I know all sort of parts of the game. As Alan claps on Chrissy there, high fives there for that great try. Just missing the jack, trying to trail the jack out of there. Take the shot away from Hong Kong, China. But um, as, uh, as much as I would obviously always like to be out there playing in a world championships or a major event, I am absolutely spoilt with the opportunity to be able to commentate as Angel so slides past, and there's so many big events to come. There are the on Bowls, the calendar. Bowls Premier League as well in November. The Nationals in October. You'll be heading over to Perth, Barry Lester. Yeah, I love Perth. Don't get there enough. It is a, a f sort of a four, four or five hour flight from from Brisbane, and that's a, it's a funny. It's a it's a bit of a conversation starter here to uh, many people from other countries. And just how big Australia is. It, they forget, they, don't they? Yeah, they, they can't believe that it takes sort of three days to drive from one side of Australia to the other or a sort of a five-hour flight from, from Brisbane 
to, to Perth and uh, or vice versa, Perth to Brisbane. So there's a nice shot there from, from Alan. Yeah, they sort of can't believe just how big Australia is. And um, You're right. And you go to Europe and you can fly that time and you could probably get from the UK to maybe Greece or Russia. Yeah, so we, we've got this big, beautiful country and uh, some great bowling clubs and lots of good players. And Perth, well, you see the sunset over the Indian Ocean over there. It's beautiful. Great bowling greens, fast tiff dwarf greens. And, uh, yeah, beautiful wine country, Val. Yes, it is. That is perfect. Alan Ryan, two great bowls. Crowd appreciating it. Yeah, you're right. Perth has got some unbelievable scenery. And, of course, Rottnest Island, beautiful over there. Yeah, I've only been there once, but... Yeah, it was a memorable experience. As we ha- see Helen Chung, she's looking to disturb this head. Just going to miss high. Can she get back? Well, she can. So she's got one left. Did you get a selfie with a quokka, Baz? Don't think so. No, I, I, uh, I know I had a swim in the water. It was very warm. I was there middle of summer. I think it was early early January. My brother used to live over there, so it was good to go and visit. But, yeah, at Ali Shield, Australian Sides Championship, Marge Morris Trophy. Those uh, The Ali Shield for me would sit, well, definitely sit top two or three for me, most favourite events to play in. I just love the fact 12 of the best men and women from each state and territory come together, and that shield and that trophy is so prestigious, and State Bowls is uh, it's an honour to be able to represent your state. And uh, it's a long-lasting trophy and an event, and I know any player that, that gets to play in it will be uh, will be very uh, privileged to play in that uh, position. And Baz, four hundredth state game, maybe. You've been doing your homework, Val. You did just put four fingers up at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did allude to it the other day. I thought I'd bring it up. Uh, Alan Ryan on the back end. Can she get another one in there? Yeah. No, very, very uh, excited to be able to join an exclusive club. Well, only uh, currently three people ever played playing 400 games, state, state games. So to join the company of Mark Jacobson, Matthew Flapper and Ray Tume, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, just a, an honour and can't wait for the opportunity, but most of all, hopefully we can we can get the job done and, and put on a good performance over there. Looking forward to hearing all about it, Baz, your 400th match. Kevin Bartlett, Sean Burgoyne, Dustin Fletcher, all of the AFL greats that have done it. Now Barry Lester. It's a big weight here from Helen Chong. Oh, oh, I don't think that's worked out at all. Yeah. A quick signal there, but I believe front that end was, pressure again, yeah. Val. That's where if you can win the front end pressure, um, Val, it goes a long way. But Alan Ryan come up with the clutch the previous end, and they hung on there, Australia. I believe that was three. I think Alan just had the three fingers up to Helen Chung. So yes, it were no only two. So two to the Australians. They take a 7-4 buffer. And Switzerland and Malta. Switzerland down 3-6. Australia need that result to go their way. They need Lara Butler and Marianne Kunzler to get the job done. And uh, this one's just going to be for our South Australian uh, viewers. So I mentioned Ray Tume. So for me, growing up, I uh, idolised a lot of players, respected a lot of players that played state and Australian players uh, um, representative duties and had the pleasure of playing against Ray Tume on a couple of occasions. So to our South Australian viewers, to the late, great Ray Tume, 406 state games for South Australia, 22 consecutive Australian sides championships. So it just goes to show the commitment at state level, club level and international level from these players. And Ray was an absolute gentleman and clocked up 406 games 
and South Australia, another strong state, beautiful greens, great place to play bowls. And so shout out to them. Um, definitely condolences to the Tum family and what a wonderful person he was for the sport. Angel, so, well, that's perfect leading. So you're forced sometimes as a lead to play under a little bit of pressure or play a weighted shot. Angel there, as much as Christina nailed the jack, just set up a little bit of a jack high situation. And she came down and played that perfectly, sat the ball, trailed off and got the jack. But the beauty of that shot was if she missed everything, her weight control was perfect just to put it in a good area. So Australia sitting in third position currently. If they win and Malta drop their match against Switzerland, Australia go back into prime position to qualify. But they are relying on other results at the moment. Angel, so... Oh, she's done it again. So she's gone from one down with the first bowl of Christina to picking up two so far. But the way this head is shaping, Christina Christic might have a little niggle at this. Try and just look to sit or trail or land. Target is there. And Baz, I believe Malta have just picked up a three against... Oh sorry, Switzerland have just picked up a three against Malta. Six apiece. Is that right? Two left-handers? Switzerland? Uh, it sure is. Marianne Kunzler just bowled out of her left hand. So there you go. It's not something you see very often. You say, don't see many lefties, Val. And then when you do, to see a, a, a dual pair, well, that's uh, quite unique. Baz is very happy right now. Yeah, I get a little bit excited when I see another lefty, I must admit. One I, of the brethren. It's uh, always good to see. We do exist. We do live <laughs> among you, right-handers. Yeah, we can we can Angel, often so get... wow nearly back cutting the jack for one down but she has achieved the backest bowl val so very happy with the way the head set up there for Hong Kong China even though it's quite a broad target for Alan Ryan Angel there even though she went through the hole what she's been able to do is get to the tee or get the backest bowl so that just makes Alan Ryan now be really conscious of what weight control is required. Alan Ryan has played some bombs over the last couple of ends. The Aussies have won the last two. Alan Ryan just missing under here. Finishing jack high. So now Alan Ryan's got two bowls left. She's two down on the head. I'm thinking I think weight will be played here. I think the key, though, is Alan needs to play and wait and get to the tee or get the backers bowl. So let's just see what she does here. I think it's it's going to be forehand again, maybe a little bit more weight, just to sort of poke one in there, try and sit or trail, shift the jack. We're seeing this hand now. You see that bowl there? That's just outside the chalk line, which, which indicates it's going to be She's jogging on in a here. Good line. Chrissy doesn't mind it. Alan Ryan sits one away and gets one in. So, not a bad effort. Still two all. to Hong Kong. Yep. So, they want to get another number here, Hong Kong. Seven for the Australian lead as we near the halfway point of the contest. Eight of 18. Well, this is the eighth of 18 ends. Well, the best bowl on the rink right now is the bowl down at the bottom of the screen. At four o'clock, as Helen Chung almost draws another, very close. So it might have just done so. Hong Kong China might be holding two or three here, but the best bowl on the head for me for Hong Kong China is the one down there at four o'clock. It's the backest bowl. It wins the tee, and it now makes Alan Ryan think. Well, what do I do? It probably needs to be Jack clean and stay around it. So it'll be a weight critical shot here. Probably some form of arriving weight. Sit and stay. So if Alan goes really quick here, kills the end and doesn't stay on the rink, she'll drop one. But she's more so thinking, wait a minute, if I just play 10 feet, 20 feet, I can land the red up onto the jack and stay around. And I can also, if I'm off target, 
hang around myself. So they're the contingencies with these shots and these players. That's what they when they look at their the head and, and, and judge the head. It's all about what happens next. So beautiful weight control here from Allen. Just needs She's to close. hang around. She's got it, Allen Ryan. She has got it, and that jack has gone straight to the ditch. Australia, two back bowls. Is that one on the left of the rink from our screen or the right of the rink from the bowler's mat? That is still on the green, and it's inbounds. Yeah, perfect example there of weight control there. Great weight control from Alan Ryan. She knew that if uh, she went too quick, her bowl would probably leave the rink. But as she's played it, it's stayed on beautifully, and... She's definitely made a one, maybe two out of it. As Helen Chong, too much room for her, draws the shot. But danger averted for the Australians because it could have been much worse. Yep, saving a multiple. Alan Ryan's done that back-to-back -back ends, saving multiples. As you see, beautiful weight control. And if she had played quick and got the result, her back two red balls would have left the rink. But great weight control to hang around, cut it back, and only drop the one. As an update, Switzerland lead Malta 7-6. Lara Butler converts a four. Two down on the head currently is Switzerland. Lara Butler on the forehand. She's trying to get the shot back or, or restrict the count here. So Australia... Nice, nice converting from Ellen Ryan. And both leads are having a great battle in Christina Christic and Angel So. High quality match. The heads have been brilliant, really. And then we see a nice starter from Angel So sliding in behind the jack, 18 to inches to two feet. And that's a beautiful shot. Conditions are fine here at Broad Beach Bowls Club in this east west direction. Seven apiece between Malta and Switzerland next door. That is one that we are keeping an eye on. 7-5 here to the Australians. Fiji, Baz, leading England. 5-4. Faro and Tolchard behind. Yeah, that's correct, Val. Lots of big games going on, and we've seen that a lot in the tournament. Players getting off to good starts, teams getting off to good starts, and it's very hard to maintain that at this level, but you never know. Upsets do, do come about in this event with so many games going on, so we'll keep you abreast of all that. Another result for everybody out there. Aaron Wilson defeats Ricardo Rubinat of Argentina. 21-3. to three. As he looks to make his statement, he is pretty much through. He's looking good, is Aaron Wilson. Christy, Christina Christic, Angel So was winning the battle of this end. But the Western Australian says, no, you don't. Takes the jack, secures one. Great morning. Not too much wind to speak of. Those flags all around Broad Beach, they are limp. Angel So, she's not far away here. Not a bad shot at all. Just probably missing out on shot. But it was a good effort nonetheless. So Australia two ahead. Massive match for them. Hong Kong, such a dangerous opponent. Angel and Helen both played in the women's fours last week that really pushed the Australian quartet that ended up going on to win the silver medal. And Christina Christic yet again with a beauty. Sitting her own bowl, knocking it up. And now it's time for the skips. Let's have a look at this first bowl from Chrissy as it comes in. Darts away beautifully. Darts into the jack and takes it. Here's the second one as well. Beautiful bowling from Christina Christic. So 
So Helen Chung, bit of work to do for her in this end. Needs to clear the front, and it's pretty close. Helen Chung. Well, you can tell who the crowd's supporting today. Because Chrissy's two bowls, thunderous applause, dead silence for Helen. But that was brilliant from the Hong Kong China skip. Alan Ryan now with her work cut out for it. She's going to go around the back. Will it stay up on the back of the rink? It certainly will. If you just joined us, Australia needing to continue to win because results at the moment are not in their hands. Or well, their fate is in any way. They are relying on Malta to drop a game. Fiji also leading the English pair of Tolchard and Faro. Alan Chung getting another one around the back, but with the jack as well. Alan Ryan. It's a really important stage of the match for the Australians as we near the halfway point. It's been a great head of bowls. A lot of jack movement. It's Alan Ryan looking to get around here. It'll come up underneath, but it'll work its way off that front bowl, and I reckon that'll go in for shot. There's a bit of a round of applause there for the Aussies, so possibly has. Just went and put some sunscreen on Val. That sun's definitely broken out over the high rises there and out of the clouds, so look out. We might catch up on some tan here. I already have. I came up very pasty, Barry. Alan Chung missing under. So it's either one or two, I believe, here to Australia with one to come. It's funny, as I sit here, Val, watching all these games, um, there's so many countries that... Uh, for me, I haven't either played against or obviously haven't played in and just love the fact that we've got this huge array of different countries out there and about and if that's not enough incentive for people to give this game up, I, I don't know what is. It blows me away to see so many countries and it's just a great advertisement for the sport. Botswana over the back there. You've got a USA. I've never played. I've never been to America, so that's on the bucket list. You look around, and, you know, Switzerland next door, Malta. These are some of the beautiful places on earth, and to see that the, these countries are being represented is just fantastic. It's, um, it's very exciting, and it's great to see. It really is great to see so many bowlers from all around the world here and a lot that reside in Australia. The Australians... Having a little bit of a consultation here. Again, they've scored one. Moving it to 8-5 at the halfway point of this contest. Of course, results have somewhat gone against them in terms of losing to Malta, losing to England. But they believe they will persist right until the very end. I believe Malta might have just picked up a two against Switzerland to lead 9-7. Okay. Christina Christic backhand, short length here, 24 metres. Well, that's a great start. Final day of sectional action 
There are, will be a couple of men's singles matches tomorrow, but pretty much the final day at the World Bowls Championships for 2023. We get into the business end of the entire tournament as it heads towards its conclusion. A lot of bowlers will finish up today. Their tournaments will be done. We hope to see them stick around for the finals. We sh we're sure that they will. Christina Christick. Crowd appreciates what she's doing out on the Broad Beach Greens this morning. Green 2, our setting. Yeah, look at those two bowls. They're actually identical in line. You won't see that very often. So that's that sort of caterpillar effect, bowl on bowl. That's a good little drill, the old caterpillar drill. Put one bowl down and try and repeat, repeat, and repeat until you get all the same. Ideally, if you can get them touching each other, we create that caterpillar effect. And you don't need a jack many times when you roll up to, to work on your game. And that's a good little correction exercise, isn't it? It is. And the old caterpillar drill. And you can get the caterpillar from being... You know, front front bowl to back bowl, six feet, eight feet when you start to try and tighten it up to potentially inches. Well, that's lovely bowling, Christina. Two on, one in behind. That's a, a good little drill. Just roll one bowl down on the on a backhand and then try and match it with the next three. Well, Just create that rhythm as you see Christina's got. It's the very hungry caterpillar at the moment because Australia holding a couple. Okay, Angel, so needs a little promotion on her last bowl, or can she get a clear run? Well, a little promotion, probably, well, close cuts for it, second. Close for it second. down. Very close. It's been a very intriguing morning, all the matches across the board. Quite close, Japan, Zimbabwe, Japan leading 10-8. Switzerland and Malta, I think Malta leading at 8 or 9-7. Australia lead Hong Kong, China... 8-5, and Fiji lead England 6-4. Very, very close here on green two as women's pairs action continues. Alan Ryan. Great Chrissy shot. likes it. And there's a reason why. Angel So just sending instructions to her skipper. Both of the Hong Kong bowlers using Hensolite Dreamline XGs. Helen Chung looking to disturb the head here. Kick the jack out. Well, she's three down now, but a bit more room. So she, she might be three down, but has achieved at least one thing. Just created herself a bit more room to draw it. But as it sits right now, so does Alan Ryan have a bit more room. She needs to make the most of this. Ideally, get in first. She looks very good here. She's got some of the jack. Well, she has. She's Well, she's tucked it in. Yeah. So Alan Ryan, just she's flexing her muscles here a bit. Her last few ends have been superb. She's had to cut down a few. She's played some ripper bowls. Been very exciting to watch. Okay, Helen Chung. Well, she's got a foot to 18 inches for shot here. If she's tight, she could turn her front ones up. She looks very quick here. Needs connection on something. She does, but she's coming around here. Getting rid of that back bolt from Alan Ryan. The Australians now have... The back bowl on the on the rink. BG lead England six five at the halfway point. What an upset that would be! England unbeaten so far. Tolchard and Farrow. they would be up there amongst the favourites now to win this tournament with the way that they played yesterday. So the Aussies really packing, packing this head in. Ellen putting one pretty much where her last one was almost. Be interesting to see where 
Alan Chung will go. Yeah, she might revert to weight here, Val. They do have a bowl back, but the problem is they don't have the back bowl. However, it will cut it down. Yeah, as you see there, those two bowls sitting together just off the centre line at 11 o'clock. They both count, so there is a clean access to them. So if she can remove those two, cut the count down, the percentages might say that that's the easier shot than having to play a, a really deft draw around the front and then inside the back. So it has, has to be a real touch play on the on the backhand trying to draw it versus a bit of a rumble up the middle on the forehand looking to take three or four bowls out of the head here. I think that's what Helen will try and play here. Forehand with weight. Let's see. Helen Chung. This is a massive bowl for their tournament. So backhand it is with weight. Going away from the target. Oh, she's in the area here, Helen Chung. She needs a rattle and stay. Well, she's, well, she's got, got the, the jack. jack. Through the hole to one down. Well, it did cut it down. They were four down. The Aussies, well, that Alan Ryan bolt that was back got knocked back it even further and went straight to the tee. So was four down to one down. And the Aussies... They'll take it, though. They continue to edge ahead. 9-5 is the scoreline after 10-8 to play. And the Australians be absolutely desperate here as they may sneak over and sneak a glance and see how close that Switzerland-Malta game is. They know how important that result is for their hopes. Yeah, as you see there, Chrissy uh, Val, just on that, I, I haven't personally seen her look over it at all. She's, uh, she's really switched on to get her job done here for her country as Christina Christic. She knows it's a long day. No matter what happens, it's going to be a long day. And she's just going to do what she can to give her country and her teammate up the other end the best chance for a victory here. Yep. Tim Smith saying the Ricks and ladies from Malta not out of the mix in this section. Well, no, they are certainly not. They're actually in the prime position. They are in the prime position. They sit in second at the moment. One point ahead of Australia on the ladder. Having said that, if they drop a match and the Australians win, then the Australians go into prime position and fate will be in their hands. So, Christina Christic just finishing a yard pass right down the line there. That's been a huge win for her. Angel so nice reply. Christina Christic's line, especially for me, has been... Almost perfect. As we see, Christina. Watched Christina bowl now for many years, coming up through the juniors and making her way up into international bowls. And that technique is just so solid, so well-rounded. And uh, as we see, have a good look at Angel So's technique as well. Nice, nice bend in the arm there. As we see, gets down nice and low. Good forward motion. So a lot of these players being rewarded for good play with sound techniques. The Malta and Switzerland match, nine apiece after 10. Fiji lead England, 6-5. Christina Christie. Close here. Not quite. Good leading, though. Two bowls inside, 18 inches. Just finding herself one down. Angel So with that ripping lead bowl with her first. She needs another one in there now. Can she repeat the dose of her first bowl? Forehand it is. Little trickle of the jack. Can she hang on for a counter? Well, it's going to be handy. Might be. Oh, that is very close. She's sitting on those... Christic front bowls, but I think I think Australia still have the two seconds in there. At least one second. Very close. 9-5, Australia lead, and 11 at 18, two hours, 15 minutes, the time limit. I doubt we're getting there. Yesterday, there was a little bit of a worry in that final match against the English. The Hooter went off in the final end, but we were well and truly on almost... Blue while Amy Farrow was putting down one of her bowls. Alan Ryan. 
One, one down. Well, if it's not shot, it's very close. She'd love it to fall in. It's sitting precariously on its bias there. You can see that little angle. It's not sitting. Yeah, some days, Val, you, want them, you pray for them to fall over for shot, and some days you don't want them to fall onto the jack and kick the jack away. But this particular example, yeah, Alan would love to have that fallen over for it. Alan Chung just sliding by wide. In a pretty good area, great weight just to try and touch the jack, take the shot away from Alan. So, Alan Ryan, minimal correction required. She can potentially get down and sit the shot ball without the jack. Great shot here, Alan Ryan. This she's, is all over it. She's very close and she's got it straight through. Nicely done from Alan Ryan. The crowd certainly appreciates it. She's really found the big bowls this morning, has Alan Ryan. Alan Chung, got a couple of bowls back there waiting, looking for some contact. Amy So's clapping this in. Well, she might get some work off the front. Well, she's gone through the hole. Wow. Minuscule hole to go through. Yeah, that, that leaves Hong Kong trying with a couple of catches now. The Aussies would be wary of that. They know. It's a pretty good setup how it is. You can see Christina's left foot there. Ronnie Yip watching from Hong Kong. Sure he'd have a vested interest in this contest as Fiji have just scored another one against the English. They led it 7-5. Make things very interesting within this section here. Yeah, it's an interesting mindset for England right now. You know, sitting well and truly out on top of the ladder. Just a matter of trying to find another gear for them. Alan Ryan. That's a pretty good position. Probably wanted to pull up a little bit shorter than that, but as it sits right now, Helen Chung. She's got a pretty good head to play to. You see Australia have delivered their six deliveries. They're out all out of bullets. Helen Chung looking for shot bowl clean. She doesn't want the outside of Alan Ryan's bolt through her nearest and run out of the head. She wants jack movement. And she doesn't want to tip that in either. Well, missing height. Not far away. So Ryan and Christic move a little bit further ahead. Three ones in a row. Three ends on the bounce. After 11, the Australians lead 10-5. Are we getting a measure here? We are. Just to make sure, maybe it could be two. That shot, well, we'll find out, Baz, whether that shot from Alan Ryan was actually in. Another measure coming from Chrissy. I think the Aussies want two here. So it might be 11-5, and it is. So Alan Ryan with that wing bowl. Ended up making it into the count. Australia score their first two since N7. And after 11, the Aussies up by a full count of six. I know we say this a lot, Val, about the weather and how sport we are here on the Gold Coast for this, this event. But what a gorgeous day it is. A little bit of sea mist. The slightest of slight breezes. Lovely temperature and... And the players are really playing up to the conditions. Stephen, look, I get where you're coming from, but they are here to, most of them are here to support Australia. You do see it in most other sports. Obviously, they do have a bias interest in the Australian team, so... And there's a lot of family and friends here as well. Yeah, that's right, Val. A lot of family and friends from Australian players have travelled long and far, taken time off work to be here to sit ringside and support their, their loved ones. So it's great to see. And that's what it's all about, sport, that yep. participation, that fun element and that 
that support from club mates and families. We see even families that have travelled from overseas with their loved ones to, to be here for these two weeks. And, and some athletes I've spoken to will be out and about post-world championships, having a look around the Gold Coast, seeing the sights, maybe laying on the beach. Why not? I, I know the American boys, they love catching a wave. Aaron Zangle and Lauren Dion, well, they love a nice swirl. They love getting out there when they can so it's a bit of best of both worlds for those boys having a bit of a wave and a bit of a bowl and they love uh i know the boys don't live far well well lauren Dion runs a surfing school in nicaragua and uh wow aaron zangle well he only lives a couple of blocks back from the main beach in cali and that's uh and that's what it's all about these bowlers they love the game but they love just being out there and giving it a go Participation rates for the sport of bowls are through the roof right now. Everyone getting out there, giving barefoot bowls a go, being outdoors, making new friends, being socially active, and bowls is such a winner for that. So you see Christina Christic on the forehand, holding one, looking to add another if she can. A little jog after this, she's stalking it. Well, Christina Christic, she's really setting the tone this morning. The lead battle has been good. She's found a good home. You can still clap good bowls, but unfortunately, you know, when there is a home crowd, you are going to see you are going to see a louder reception for the Australians than than anybody else. And it's the same anywhere. We saw it in Birmingham last year. The only people that were really clapping the Australian bowls were the Australian team. So it happens everywhere. Unfortunately it's just part and parcel of sport. Yeah, well, I won't be clapping any Collingwood results tonight, Val. That's that's a given, mate. No, go the D's. Yeah, and when I'm at a Richmond game, I ain't clapping the other team, that's for sure. Richmond. Now, remind me who they are. They're the team that won three flags in four years, Baz. Oh, that's right. Yeah. When, when was that? Uh, pretty recently. <laughs> Surely you've got a good memory. D yeah, Martin. Yeah, no, phenomenal team. Wonderful coach. He's a good coach, and unfortunately he's up here now, but good luck to Dimmer. Helen Chung finds herself two down, 18 inches of room for shot. She needs a clear run. She's trickling up, and she's scoring the shot. So that's enough so far. Helen Chung getting the job done with her first delivery. Helen Ryan on the charge here. Trail the jack. Slide off that last bowl of Helen's. Well, the Aussies, they're it's, feeling it this morning. They are. They are. They absolutely love this Broad Beach Bowls Club. Chrissy and Helen have played here for a plethora of years. Okay, Helen Chung, can she repeat the dose? For me, it's all about just giving this bowl a chance here. There are options. Work off her own. Sit that last bowl of Alan Ryan's. She's going to miss under. You can see that sharpness there. It is going to start to turn a lot, a lot more throughout is. the day. The middle session here at Broad Beach can get very fast. And sharp, as I mentioned earlier. Those wide drawing hands here at Broad Beach. No matter what the pace is here at Broad Beach, these hands just draw all day long. And 12 of 18 this one, two hours and 15 minutes. That's the time limit. We won't get there. So that's fine. No need to worry about that. Sectional rounds conclude today for the women's pairs in Australia are sitting in a very precarious position. Malta currently above them. England undefeated and looking... Almost home and hosed in the group. Alan Ryan takes the jack. And Australia currently holding a big multiple. Yeah, it would be at least three, potentially four. I reckon it is four for me. Just having a look at the angles here, ringside. Yep, it's four. So Australia, Alan Ryan. Look at the size of this draw coming in such from a high angle. Sharp turn of the bowl and gets it right in the teeth. 
And She's having a- some sort of a game, Ellen Ryan. Both of them are really. And Angel So and Helen Chong have been in the area. Unfortunately, from a Hong Kong perspective, they've only won one of the last six ends. They leveled things at four apiece. After five, having won three of the five ends. But since then, only a single to them. And Australia have scored seven. Currently leading by six. And a full count. So Helen Chung, big moment in this game. If they want to stay in the reach of trying to win this game, stay near the Aussies. Backhand it is, trying to draw within 10 inches for shot. Anywhere within maybe 20 inches will get them third or fourth, but this is as tough as it gets. Backhand, down a number, and she's heavy. Some massive end from Alan Ryan. And a big collect sees them forge ahead. It's massive. I believe it was a four, Barry. Yeah, four it is. So the Aussies now lead it by 10. And this will go a long way to determining how the rest of the section goes for them. It's a great start to the day. They had a good... Opener yesterday with a 23-shot win over Zimbabwe. Finished it in a fashion that they wouldn't have wanted to with a loss to England. So I think Lara Butler has just drawn one to the ditch over there. Very intriguing match, but I reckon the Rickson sisters have one right next to the jack in the ditch. What I really liked about this match was that team meeting about four or five ends ago, Val. You could see Chrissy and yep. Alan just having a bit of a chat. And what they were probably discussing was Hong Kong's playing well here. How can we sort of change things up to, you know, uh, change their pattern, change their rhythm? And, and it was all about length. And you can see they, they went on a few ends against Hong Kong China on those long ends. And Alan was forced to play that big bowl when they were four down. Alan's pretty much said, I don't want to have to do that again. So let's go short and see if that works. And from there, it's uh, been a lot of momentum swing back in Australia's way due to a, a new jack length. Yeah, you're right. And we can we often see that those chats, and it was a really important one for England yesterday, that they had Chrissy well and truly on top of the lead battle. Sophie Tolchard and Amy Farrow going back, having a little conversation. And, well, we all know what happened from there. They pulled out to a pretty big lead. Aussies got it back, but... Got the job done in the end, did England, thanks to a big five late in the piece on end 15. Fiji, though, currently leading the English. Aaron Wilson has already won his match this morning. Yeah, that was, that was he I just spotted him about half an hour ago, just chilling out, relaxing. He yeah. must have got that done pretty quickly. 21-3 against Ricardo Rubinat. I love saying that name. I, 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 I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of Ricardo, shout out to my little mate, Joshy Thornton. He's uh, been tuning in from afar. And when I think of this green we're on here, Ricardo... One of the many nicknames he has. Mm-hmm. Won a gold medal. Tony Bernal. Just about where that jack is right now on this particular green. What a moment that was. Val, I, I, it's probably one of the most memorable moments in my whole bowling career. Not the fact that they, they won the gold. It's just the position we were currently in at the moment, at that time. We were playing a quarterfinal match against Ireland on green one. And Aaron Sheriff, when the Para boys won gold, he grabbed us together in the middle of the green. He said, boys, if that doesn't inspire you, nothing ever will. And uh, those were Aaron Sheriff's famous words because he knew that we didn't want to be distracted by them winning gold. When we were in a big battle against Ireland with four or five ends to go, quarterfinal match of our fours, and the whole place erupted. 
and what a moment that was. And I'll never forget it, Aaron Sheriff, just making sure that we were focused and, and similar to what the players are experiencing here, Val, trying not to be distracted by yep. other results. We're over there trying to win a quarter final and a green over. The whole grandstand, the whole venue just erupted when Australia won gold. And those words never, ever leave my mind. If that doesn't inspire you, nothing ever will. Amazing. Great insights from Barry Lester about matches past and in, into an insight and what the players might be thinking right about now. And speaking of those other results, Alta have taken the last two ends with singles, leading Switzerland 11-9. That's after 12. Christina getting down. Oh, sorry, Alan... Well, it's, it's close, oh. I think, Hong Kong. Yes, yeah, we still. see Angel there with yeah. a hand gesture. So if Angel thinks it's close, well, we've got no chance of judging it from here. But it's uh, a pretty kind setup for Helen Chung, forehand working under that last bowl of Alan Ryan's. Or if she's slightly tight, turning her front bowl up. Can afford to reach. Got a nice couple of bowls out there waiting in the wings. If, she, if there was jack movement. So this needs to find a way through. Little slide, well, not quite enough. So, Troy Jameson, that is the situation. Australia do need Malta to drop something. If Malta don't, they are through. The destiny is in Malta's own hands. But not necessarily this game. It could be any of the games throughout the day. So... Australia would probably prefer it to be this game so that they don't have to worry, but if it's not, they'll be relying on other results throughout the afternoon. It's on the proviso that Australia goes undefeated anyway. Alan Chung having a look at this, just taking a walk. She knows. Angel's, Don't mind this. Yeah, Angel So just showing that if she gets that front wing bowl of Alan Ryan's there at, what would that be, 11 o'clock, she can work off that, get back for the jack, make a three. And that just keeps Hong Kong then in touch with the Aussies. If she is tight, she can get the blue ones up onto the jack, spit the jack back. So it's all weight critical because you play this too quick, it could kill the end, which is probably not a good result. Um, so it comes back to that weight critical because if she is a bowler too tight, what will the weight do to the jack movement? Doesn't want to overdo it or underdo it. So Helen Chung, she's been very solid this match. Has certainly been, Barry. Look at the shape of this head. Just proves all players top of their game. So Helen Chung with weight. For me, it would be about 15 to 20 feet of weight looking to disturb the head. Angel So's clapping it on. Doesn't mind well, she's it. She's played it perfect. She has. Got the jack out, and I reckon she's made a couple there, possibly even three. It is three. Could not have played that any better, Val. It all came back to weight control. If she played that quicker, the jack spits out and kills. If she doesn't play it quick enough, she won't get back off that bowl. So Helen Chung, using all her experience, very, very renowned international bowler from Hong Kong, China. Dropped a four the last end, and she's replied with a three. Absolutely brilliant. From Hong Kong. And they get the margin back to seven with five to play. They'll believe. They're not out of this group yet either. Mathematically, they are still a chance of going through. So, a lot on the line for Hong Kong. Currently sitting in seventh. And just a win behind the Aussies. So, shot difference will come into play here. But you've got all the way from second down to seventh. All mathematical chances of getting through in this group. England, the lowest they can probably finish, well, is sixth. But I doubt that's going to happen. However, Fiji are pushing them at the moment. Seven apiece there between the Fijians and England. Elizabeth Motsewai and Losalini Dikoya. Bit 
short from Angel So with her first as Christina Christick as the foot guide of Ellen Ryan to go to. It's crashing in, so it was kind of in the way there. I think Malta might have just secured a big collect here. And Switzerland. Their yeah, last stand might be done. Who knows? They're down 11-9. But the Rickson sisters have continued to persist. Like that river, Barry Lester. Four it is to Malta. 15-9, they lead now. Still a lot of ends left, of course, especially in three-bowl pairs. Of course, the maximum being six shots, so games can change quickly, as we saw there. Helen Chung, one down on the head, picking up a three, so four-shot turnaround. And that was due to just everyone on the whole rink particularly playing well, but that was due to just Angel So putting bowls into good area, creating opportunities for a skip. And it's warming right up, Val. It is so nice today. Beautiful day to be beachside here at Broad Beach Bowls Club. And, of course, Sunday, we'll see the conclusion of this a big event. I'm sure a lot of players will be sad to leave here come Monday and Tuesday. I know some people, as I mentioned earlier, will stay back and have a look around. But Why not? You've got... You know, some of them are coming from the other side of the world, so why not stay around, have a couple more weeks off, go do some travel, go down to Melbourne, have a look at the wonderful city that's down there. I'm not sure if they've packed enough warm clothes, Val, but yeah, yeah why maybe not, not? Who get knows? down to Melbourne, have a look around, but yeah, plenty to see and do. Sydney, Gold Coast, there's plenty to do up here as well. Go do the theme parks. Chrissy draws another one around that front bowl. Great shot, Christina Christic. Well... Just both players having a slight end off there, but then Chrissy said, no, I've got an extra bowl here. Yep, I, I shall correct. It, if I have to do it my third, I will. And, uh, well, the flags for me still aren't really moving much at all. It's quite impressive conditions right now. Crowd's loving this action here. So we see a lot of people around the greens on holidays, travelling from interstate. Put this in their calendar a long time ago. We'll hang around the Gold Coast for a couple of weeks, watch the world's best in action and have a bit of a holiday at the same time. Well, Mark, you can tune in to the World Champion Champions. Yes, that'll be broadcasted here, the Gold Coast Tweed. Guys are going to be doing that. Next week, so that'll be a club, Rabina, Karen Murphy and John O'Davis representing Australia, but there's a lot of high pedigree bowlers in there. Izatzul Kepler, Nurul Aliani, Jamil, Daniel Salmon, Selena Goddard, Shelton Bagri Howley, Edward Morris. So as this head sits at the moment, it's fairly inviting for Helen to play some form of weight down under the front, looking to sit the shot bowl or trail the jack. Key to this shot is it's still well. We'll just see how this goes. It's it's going it's going to drop away, but it needs to hold. Look, it, clear the front. Oh, well, she's got it clean. So the key to that shot is still believing that you need to send it out if you don't want. If you're looking to play a weighted shot, most times we look to play and focus on the weight, but sending it out and letting the bowl do the work. And Helen Chung, she did that perfectly then. Zimbabwe leading Japan, 17-10. So Karen Sinclair and Jane Rigby looking pretty good themselves. Alan Ryan. Alan Ryan puts in a beauty. Yeah, putting it back. So Hong Kong, China, I think they've got to stick to that. So they've got three seconds. Alan Chung, going to be forehand though this time. Looking for that last bowl of Alan Ryan's. Slightly in Australia's favour because it's short of the jack, so... We'll see if she sticks to the backhand here or lines up forehand. 
Oh, backhand it is. So I'm not quite sure the objective here. Maybe it's backing the weight off and trying to sit it out backhand or maybe just looking for the jack. Angel So, she's watching this. Is it going to get down in time? Well, that's a weight, and you want to be careful. Not quite sure of the shot selection there. Can't really help you on that one, Val. If you can't help me, well, then I've got no, uh -huh. then I've got no chance. I think it was just uh, maybe play something of the same instead of starting fresh and try and get the jack. So, Alan Ryan, forehand it is, trying to repeat the dose, get another one in there. Just motoring along too quick, but that'll be one to the Aussies. They're back on the board. They lead by eight with just a few ends to play. 16 to eight. Two per end needed for Hong Kong China to tie this one up. And it's starting to get towards those panic stations for Angel So and Helen Chung. So, Jack Roll from Christina Christic gets it almost to where Alan was standing. It's going to be a shorter length. So, Christina Christic, her leading has been exemplary this morning. And it's the poor performance that they were so desperate to have just to start the morning off well. As Lara Butler has an opportunity to pop in a third here for Switzerland to try and almost get that four back and get the margin to three to the Ricks and Sisters. Might have just done it. I'm not sure. It's Christina Christic looks to get another one. Close to the jack here. And this has been brilliant from Christina Christic. Yeah, that length, as you see there, the jack right up in the middle of the green, top of the chalk line. So... It's 25, 4 to 5 metres, this one. It's a very, very short length. Christina, she is loving these short jacks as Angel So picks up the jack but still finds herself one down. Good attempt. See the players over there, Kelsey, Lindsay, Dorney, Heyman. Obviously having the bye this morning. Enjoying some downtime and cheering on teammates from a side and we're seeing a lot of that a lot of color in the crowds as Christina just looks to add two feet wants to cover the jack well the three bowls have been brilliant yeah yeah just she wouldn't have been too happy with last end just playing the one bowl in there but over over the 18 ends you're going to have a couple of off ends but when you when you do you got to respond and that's what Christina can do and look at that three beautiful drawn shots now, what can Angel So reply with? She will cut it down, you'd think. Oh, definitely got second there, Val. Yep. Not bad at all. From Angel So. So the skips make their way down. Hong Kong's tournament with a loss here. Probably be over. England have taken an 8-7 lead over Fiji, who they are desperate to keep themselves in this contest and in this tournament as well, and a win for them. Well, that'll go a long way in keeping the pressure on both Australia and Malta. If they can get it. Alan Ryan and Christina Christic, however... They have been brilliant this morning. Consistently in the head. 
Only coughed up two multiples from the 14 ends that we've completed so far. And they've got a lot of bowls in the head here. So Malta leading Switzerland, 15-11. Switzerland currently holding two. And that is a nice response there from Helen Chung, who's put one right behind the jack, and she just continues to pepper and continues to push away and probe and ask these questions of Alan Ryan. They've fought hard. They have been persistent today. Bowl on bowl or bowl through Jack, missing. But as you see there, Val, that weight is perfect. Yeah. And the reason it's perfect is it's almost Jack high to the tee at the back. Alan has one more left in the artillery. And that's a trained shot many times over from the Aussies and I'm sure many of the other countries playing the weighted shots and knowing that if you miss, you finish near the tee. And that's... Visualising the weight as well as the line, knowing that if you feel the right weight, you can get the reward of getting one back to the tee. Helen Chong on the forehand, looking to get another one in there, but ideally not make this shot any easier for the Aussies. Well, she's blocked the hole. Up. Well, she's opened it up. Oh, she has. Well, that's you said uh, she blocked it, and then well, I thought she was getting yeah. the heart of that bowl, but that's yeah, flopped it around and. Alan Ryan, well, she's got an opportunity here, just has to hit that gap, and she will find something. And as you see there, Val, not only has Helen Chung unfortunately opened the head up, but she's pretty much covered up Alan Ryan's nearest bowl also. So a couple of big things swinging towards Australia's way in this particular head. And that's those contingents we speak about. If you're tr looking to draw another shot, that's okay. But be heavily focused on what you don't want to do to make it any easier for your opposition. And it's hard enough to play the shots, let alone have your opposition then open things up for you and make it then easier. So Alan Ryan's gone from a real tricky shot to, I would say, a much easier shot. There is still some level of danger if she does happen to clip her nearest bowl out. So it'll be minimum weight. Cannon even works. Blue through red through blue. But the best result for me is getting that jack out of there. Just going to miss high. Well, that's not too bad. One down's okay as well. Soak up an end. Not a lot of opportunity here for Helen Chung to, to get another one in there. So we'll see what happens. So... Helen Chung, there isn't much of an opportunity, but she'll do her best, and we've seen her best this week It's or last week. It's pretty bloody good, so let's see where she goes. Cool. Looking to try and get around those two front bowls, and I'll tell you what, Barry Lester, she's not far away. What an effort. That is a great effort from Helen Chung. And just the one, margin at seven. One's not enough for Hong Kong. There are three ends to play. They need a multiple at some stage. Australia with the last bowl of this end. They'll look to try and get one more end and really just finish things off here because they want to ensure that they get the win to continue to apply the pressure on the top two in this section. England lead Fiji 9-7. Great recovery from them. They've been behind for a lot of the match. And just a reminder to all our viewers that these players, they're playing on, they're playing across over five venues, multiple greens at the venues, multiple directions and various rinks. And as so we, hard to adapt, Baz. And as we know, day-to-day -day, players have to keep adjusting. So even if back at your club, with you've got one or two greens at your club, you generally know across the green there's different rinks that react differently. So there's one example, just one green at your club. Then, then if you've got two or three greens at your club, you know that all three greens will probably play slightly different, slightly different on the rings, slightly different in the direction. Well, these players are going, they're hopping venues day to day and swapping 
directions on those particular days. So being able to settle into a rhythm on one rink is not available for these players as to see some of the TV games you may watch previously. So hats off to these players. They're adjusting day in, day yeah. out, game by game. And to be able to back up and play at this abil- with this ability is, is so good to see. And it's not easy. And then you throw in the elements. You've got the dew of a morning some days. You've got the, the, the rain. You've got the wind. So we're uh, witnessing some great play and really good persistence across all conditions for these players. You are right, Barry Lester. Just yeah. trying to see how many. Well, you've got many, five greens. Yeah, five clubhouses. Five or well, five clubs, but not to mention there's four greens here, two at Helen's Vale, so that's six. Then you've got two at Paradise Point that they'll that they're playing on. Two so at Mudry Bar. Eight, two at Mudry Bar, and then so that's what that's five. Oh my God, I've lost my seven, maths here. Nah, it's it's seven. four, six, eight. And then three at, Ten. at 11. Yep. So, so three at uh, Musgrave. Musgrave. So it's a massive, massive effort to... Play on 11 different greens. Because I know personally, Val, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'd love to play on... I'd like to pick a rink here and just play on it all day long. I'm, yep. I really would. Um, you know, we're, we're lucky with the TV rink, I guess, with the BPL that we, we get to play on it a fair few times before the, the big finals. But even so, we are playing on another green throughout the day games. But... It's just another great element to this World Championships, which I love. And they walk away picking up a medal of some sort or or achieving some level of greatness that they've, have, they've had to do it across multiple venues and surfaces. So Alan Ryan just putting her left foot down there to Christina, asking her to... Just put one in, in that area. So, as you can see, Hong Kong China's holding shot there. But uh, Alan's just really keen to put one where maybe they could potentially drop a number and get another one around it as opposed to maybe crashing into the front red. Clear run here. She's played it well, Christina. That's a as great home. Has done all morning. She's led beautifully. And it's really set things up for Alan Ryan to play some bombs and to play some ripper shots. And... Australia, they've just kept applying the pressure on Hong Kong, China. They've probed and they've asked a lot of questions and Hong Kong have done the same, but they just haven't had the answers. Uh, Marilyn Maloney, this isn't the final round. I think it's just a, a bowls link error. There are two matches to go after this in the uh, women's pairs sectional rounds, so don't fret. We'll uh, continue to keep you updated throughout the day as to how that goes. So, Christina Christic back on the mat. Forehand it is, switching back over. Long and length end. Ditch to ditch again, Val. Just missing under here for Christina. Good attempt, weight-wise, just to sit that shot bowl and has managed to stay on. Thumbs up from Alan there saying, thank you. You never know, that bowl over there could come in handy. Green's just been uh, holding up beautifully here. I know that they've uh, cut off all activity post day's play as well, so really scheduling their wear out really well and monitoring the wear. Yep. Come 4.35 o'clock when the games are done, the greens are then out of play. The green keepers here are the elite of the elite. That's Absolutely sensational. Aaron Sheriff is one of them. And it's quite common they, they do that during the Australian Opens as well, Val, so they'll... When the, the bowls are finished for the day during the Australian Open, they'll rest them at night. And that's that's a big thing for Broad Beach to be able to do that in other venues because there is revenue to be made of an evening. But just for that small window of time across a, a major event like an AO, etc., they're just trying to provide the best greens available for the players. And it's uh, a great gesture from the clubs to say, we're not going to allow any other bowls after or outside of the main play on the greens. And uh, as we know, barefoot bowls, social bowlers um, love the game of bowls too, but they're just uh, honouring the players in the event. And 
You're right, Baz, and a, a little congratulatory message as well for uh, for Christina Christic because she's going to notch up game 150 against the Netherlands in the next session, which is an amazing performance, and especially considering Alan Ryan did it just two days ago. So hand in hand, those two, they when one reaches a milestone, the other one not too far behind, Aaron Wilson notches up game 250 in the final sectional round for him today. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Well done to all the players. Yeah, great little milestones along the way. and Or could be tomorrow for Disco. And good little um, mementos to just to recognise just that effort and longevity. And that's um, it's probably something a lot of these players will look back in their careers. We've spoken about Amy Farrow winning a, a world title 19 years apart, J- Jimmy Reynolds playing in the Manchester Commonwealth Games in 2002 and then 21 years later winning a world title. The longevity for me is probably something a lot of players would be most proud of. And then we look at Lindsay Clark. Well, Lindsay Clark notching up over 450 games and hanging up her bowl shoes, her pink international, sunnies. Her international bowl shoes. Yes, her pink sunnies and her big loop earrings <laughs> uh, after, the, you know, after this Sunday. So um, the longevity, the, the juggling of, well... The flying, the living out of a backpack and back and, and travel bag, the, the hotels, the, the tournaments, the training, um, trying to pay the bills, trying to feed the kids, all that stuff. It's a big juggle, and these athletes well, she's got manage big, it well. Big role to play at the Nationals as well, Barry Lester, does Lindsay Clark. So well done to all those players. And uh, there's players out there playing big, big numbers for their country. You look at like someone like Alex Marshall... I don't even know if he knows how many games he's played for Scotland. But I'd love it'd to be know. Scary to think how many. Could he have played in excess of the seven hundred? Well, I think so. In thirty years. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm sure we could. I could actually probably ask Alex how many does he think he know, know he played, but I'm sure he'd have a rough idea, if not an exact idea. But yeah. So, as we see here, tight little head, couple of shots to Hong Kong, China. Angel, so just indicating there to Helen, maybe it's best to go back in. You won't build up a target. So as we look at this head in isolation, Val, what um, what Helen doesn't want to do with this head, yes, you would love to be able to just come down forehand and play the open draw, put another one in there at 3 o'clock. She'd love to do that. But the drama with that is if she puts one up in the way or puts something next to the jack or next to the shot bowl, she actually makes it a much broader and easier yeah. target for Alan Ryan. So that's where she's saying, well, I might just try and take the two here and put something that can count and not make this a bigger target for Alan Ryan. So backhand it is. Staring it down. Looks pretty good on, on a decent line. Probably just needs to hold and yeah, hold and hurry. So not quite getting it done there, Helen Chung. So I'll bring you an updated score after this for the Malta versus Switzerland contest. Switzerland currently holding a big score. Malta wants something to run, and I reckon it has. Connie Rickson. Well, that's a massive shot. I I reckon five or six down there. Yeah. So Malta, five or six down to one up. Huge match uh, going on next door, as we've spoken about, Val. But that's a huge moment in that match. Well, I believe they might have only been up by one at that point too, so they would have been in danger of going behind by about four. Alan Ryan on the forehand here. A couple of options. Sit the bowl, draw the shot. Nice speed, just missing high. So two it is to Hong Kong, China. So it just well, it's what they needed. So now they're within, the game a, alive. they're within a maximum of taking the lead here, Hong Kong. Two ends to play. If the Aussies can just win this end, they can go a long way to finishing things off. That match, after end 16, Malta lead Switzerland 16-14. They have saved something big. They were down at least four, and Connie Rickson played an absolute bomb. Right here. 
Australia leading by five. England lead Fiji by four. They've pulled away to a bit of a lead here. So Christina Christick will have a bit to do here. Angel So with a pretty good first up delivery. This one is the last few ends is this thing this thing sort of seems like it's gone out of this contest. You feel as though Australia have cruised, but Hong Kong they have believed. They've continued to push. Angel So holding one. She needs to just try and double up, create a little bit of extra pressure for the Aussies to just show that they're right in this match. As we see scoreboard-wise, if they pick up a maximum, they can actually win the game. But a five is what they're after. They're holding two so far. But Christina Christic, it's a great opener. When an opposition's chasing a number, just get your insurance in early. And then you've got five goes at trying to get the shot now. Needs to hold... It's going to draw away a little edge. So still two to Hong Kong. So a glimmer. A glimmer here for Angel. So he needs to put another one in there. A glimmer is starting to become a ray. On the forehand again. Needs to hurry for me. No, she's played it pretty well, Angel. So well, that'll do for three. Yeah, well, this is good leading from Angel. So. so Christina, well, she needs to just take a bit extra time on this one. And a three. Reset, oh. grab a new line. A three would be absolutely, well, that would scare the Aussies immensely. Christina, forehand it is. Good body language. Alan's clapping it. Looks good from here. Christina Christic, she only really needs to pass the front. Blue she does. She's Chrissy. played this. What and a shot. Three down. One down. She's cut it back. But that's all she needed to do. And Alan Ryan now has things to work with. Yeah, perfect location as well. Short of Jack. Going to be hard to remove without m removing their own bowls here, Hong Kong, China. But it's a game of patience here. This is a... Um, Probably a two-bowl play or even a three-bowl play here for Helen Chung. She can't go chasing with her first two. She needs to build ahead first, then look for an opportunity. Uh, the objective with Helen's first one or first bowl and probably her second is to beat the wide bowl of Christina Christics. Get a couple more in there, and as we see, the way the head's shaping, if those shot bowls, first and second shot bowls, were to be moved. Fair chance that Jack would move as well. Yep. And the Australians, they lead it by five. Winning this end would at least ensure that they'd get a tie and they won't lose. They score a two this end, it's over, and they win and they do what they have to do. Now Helen Chung just needs to get another one in there. She's, well... Got a bit of weight on this. If she sits that bowl well, she has. It's come in. It <laughs> won't do for second, but it's a nice little nest egg there that they've got. But the thing is, Chrissy played that bowl so well. Yeah, four out of five bowls in there are Hong Kong Chinas. And uh, we see Christina's bowl there, second shot. Alan Ryan, well, she's probably going to beat the front blue, is she? Well, interesting. Okay, so the the shot here is um, third well, the shirt, third shot bowl here just on about two o'clock. Yep. The plan is to work off that, and then the, and then the sit Christine is out. So inside of this blue bowl here, at two two thirty, work across the head and, and turn Christine is out. She's not a mile away here, Helen Chung. Inside of this blue bowl, spit the red bowl out. She's she played it. Got it. And all of a sudden, Barry Lester, Hong Kong, hold four. 
Well, I don't have a teleprompter to draw it up, but if I was to draw it up, that's exactly what you would play. Called Helen sensationally Chung. by you, Barry Lester. That this is exactly what you said she should do. Inside of that blue bowl at 2.30. Oh, Bang. look at that. I think the call was better than the actual shot, Baz. Well, she had to negate yeah. the front blue and work inside Alan's last ball. So all of a sudden... Now, well, this would get it to within one if Alan Ryan can't do anything about it. And can Australia spill the bowls onto the jack yet? Yeah, Chrissy. I like that call from Christina. Backhand, because forehand high, there's no reward. Whereas backhand narrow, you can crash into that front front uh, bowl of Angel Sows and build the head or crash the head open. Or if you're high, you clean a few out. Alan Ryan has turned her back on this. She's tight. And, oh my word, Hong Kong. They've got one more. This to level the game. Or possibly, anyway, on a live score. So Helen Chung, two and a half feet of room to add another. And for me, that looks quick. Yep. On a live score, this... It looks quick. She needs to stay things. around or potentially land. Well, she's very quick. Does it stay on? That has dropped on the edge of the rink. So there you go. So, so if Alan Ryan can't put another one in here... It'll be four and... Heading into the last end, it's anyone's. Big shot required here. Next door, Lara Butler has an opportunity to get closer to Malta. Malta leads 16-14 after 16. So nerves everywhere from the Australian point of view. Hong Kong, they, well, we said, Barry, they've been brilliant. They've been absolutely magnificent. They've probed and asked the questions all day. They've persisted. Will persistence pay off? Yeah, find your spot and hit it straight through it. Staring it down. Big staring way. it down. She wants it, Alan Ryan. And she can't. She hits the front. And I think that was a four. It was... And all of a sudden, Barry Lester, what we thought was going to be a foregone conclusion with the sting sort of out of it. Well, we've got a grandstand finish. Ten-minute warning hits us. It just goes to show, uh, Val, as this tournament wears on, the games are definitely getting longer. As you look around... We're seeing some games. I can see an, a game over there. Only 12 ends played. So as the as the tournament wears on, players are just becoming more comfortable in the, in the format, more comfortable in the surrounds, and the time limit really isn't coming into play. So we're seeing a few games now getting tested with this time limit as Angel So needs to try and start off well here for a skip, and she's done a good job there. The experience of Alan Ryan you spoke about, 150 games, and Christina Christick, well, she's about to knock on that door as well. So the Australians, well, they just need to win this end. This is now pivotal. Yeah, simulated training here. These players would have worked closely with their coaches. They would have been in this position in training, and that's a big key to this game. I know from my involvement at club level in pennant and state championships, as Chrissy tries to pick up the jack, where she just edges it. You can go out and practice day to day, week to week, as much as you like. But if you're not comfortable and have a game plan when the game's on the line, well, you're leaving it to chance and hope. And you've got to have a length. You've got to have a format in set up for you to get tr the job done. And Christina and Alan, well, they'll be all over this from a yep. simulated perspective. Hong Kong, well. Just the tail of the tape between N6 and 12, the seven ends that were played, Australia lost one of them, and after the 12th, they led 15-5. Since then, Hong Kong have won four of the last five ends, including a three, a two, 
and a four. That big four on the last end has set things up to perfection for the Hong Kong China Stars. Angel So. Yeah, that's right, Val. So, you know, we're, we're happy to drop ones, and that's okay yep. in terms of any format of the game of bowls. But anything after a one becomes a surplus. So that so if you if you drop a two, well, that's a plus one. If you drop a three, it's a plus two. And like you mentioned there, it wasn't so much dropping the ends, but it's more so the surplus. So I've got that down for about six-plus shots by dropping numbers, and that yep. that's what can really hurt you in this game, those numbers. Hong Kong needed more than two per end to close this back and currently they are holding a tie. Angel So just drifting through. Well, it's her bowl out there, way out there at uh, three, sorry, nine o'clock, which that is the shot. Christina Christic just needs to find one in the middle here. Both lines, very handy. Alan Ryan clapping this in. It's just going to... Finish slightly high, but it's a great shot, Christina. So that's going to be, be the one to beat. They've got to finish two inside that Hong Kong China for a win or one inside that for a draw. The thing for Ellen Ryan that she'll be happy about, she's got last bowl. Hong Kong have been sensational. It's been a great match. We thought the sting might be out of it, but they have fought so hard and so valiantly. The skips now with it all to do. Australia need to win to keep their tournament hopes alive. Malta, I think, leading by three against Switzerland with an end to go. Could be four. I think it is four. 18-14. So that result looks like it won't go Australia's way as the skips make their way down. Helen Chung on the backhand. Gee, she'd love to get the shot first. Take it away from Alan Ryan. Out of this skip battle. Now, Angel So doesn't mind it. Needs to hold. It is going to get around the front. Is it going to hang on, though? Oh, Angel So. Go no, it says no, one to Australia. Still gone too far. So just where the jack is at the moment, Val, and you've heard me speak about this a lot in the last week or so, that's where the quickest part of the green would be. It's the most worn area, the most stood on area. It's the most active area on this grass. And you'll see the bowls are just starting to run on a touch when they get in there. So you see Alan just needs to get a little bit of finish out of this one. So just as the bowls, we're seeing now we're seven or eight days in. Putting the jack around that firm area, around that three-quarter area. Really hard to get exact weight. So Helen Chung, she needs to take a foot off. A bit more grass. She has got an open forehand. Will she switch? She's got a lot of bowls to negotiate on her backhand. It's be some some shot if she draws it. Alan Chong. What a match this has turned out to be in the end. 16-15. The Aussies have led for the majority of it. Just for context, Hong Kong haven't led since the conclusion of end one. This is end eighteen. Well, going about it the hard way is Helen Chung backhand. She's got an open drawer on the forehand. Thought she'd try and have two looks at it. As you can see, those two front bowls are in the way, and definitely that one bowl just off course there. So Australia, they won't want to make this any easier. Potentially, potentially cover any jack movement here. So Alan Ryan having a chat with her coach, Karen Murphy. I think they'll be pretty happy the fact that they've got shot. But I think for me, it might be just to cover the jack movement of Helen Chung's last bowl. So it is forehand. Ideally, just trying to finish around about that 7 o'clock area count and cover. Well, she's slapped her hand. She's not too happy with this, Alan Ryan. Looks pretty good to me. It's going to drop under. I'm oh, just turning under. Just rocking up with hers. So Australia, a few short bowls here. Hong Kong, they are controlling the back of the rink here, Barry Lester. I, I, if, if Helen Chong switches to the forehand now, I, I'd be surprised because she, the head hasn't changed. So Baz, Unless you reckon we're holding game here? Oh, for me, it's definitely one to yep. Australia, but I, I, I don't know why she'd change now. She had an opportunity to, to play this with her last... 
And now she looks very two-minded here, does Helen Chung. I think she should be walking down to the head and having a better look at this and really feeling out the shot before she plays it. I don't think... Well, Angel's not calling her down either. Well, finally, finally, she's calling her down. Yep, she needed to do this. This is a massive bowl. So but Helen's not... No, but Helen's not shifting. I, I'm, I'm a bit confused here, Val. Angel says calling Helen yep. down. And she's finally agreed to make her way down the rink here. It's an open draw on the forehand, but that only gets the draw. I think Helen Chung, she's just searching for the for the shot to win the game here. So yep. interesting. Because a one will tie it, which while it's not the result that Australia want, it still leaves them with a big chance. A draw won't do for Hong Kong. They need to win. Okay, so this, this is another mind battle as well. Okay, so we're in a position where Hong Kong, they need to win to stay alive. Um, but they also have got the ability to try and draw the shot, to get a draw, to really make it hard for the Aussies. And their number one priority is to try and win this game to stay alive. And that's why Helen Chung is trying to play backhand. I think she's trying to trail the jack or sit the bowl. So, Helen Chung to send down her last. Lara Butler's gone with some sort of weight here on the next rink over and just missed the jack. So if she had a got it, Malta would have tied things up. Oh, sorry, Switzerland would have tied things up against Malta. But the Maltese, Ricks and Sisters, they do get the job done. And Helen Chong is going to come down. So if Hong Kong win this, this could spell the end of Australia's tournament here. So if Hong Kong want to win this game, I think for me it's forehand. Try and trail the jack down to Christina's left foot. Potentially that far or... Well, I think it's just... Because it gets in the way. But it just gets anything, behind, yeah. Anything jack, Val. If you yeah. kill the jack, you win the game. If you trail it over to Christina, you win the game. Or, if they've got second shot, is it just backhand look to sit the shot bowl for Australia? It's uh, it's hard for us to, to yeah. really try and give you a good feeling of what Helen could do because there's so many options. But we're trying to cover off as many as we can here. The Hooter has gone, so... We've hit the time limit here, which doesn't matter because we've only got two bowls left. And once you start the final end, you, you're allowed to complete it. So this is huge. Helen Chung, if she misses, Australia win. If she gets something, it's either a tie or a Hong Kong win. Well, uh, I, I personally, sorry, Val, I, I personally wouldn't be talking to anyone now. Helen's been looking at this head for nearly on mm. five minutes. I don't think it's time for another opinion. I think Helen's just got to stick fat to what she wants to play here. I know she just spoke to the coach on the bank. I think it's too late for that. Forehand, looking for the jack, Helen Chung. She's really analysing this and just having a think. It gets to the point where you kind of just need to get on the mat and try and get things done. And I think... Well... The crowd sounds yeah. upset, but they shouldn't yeah. be. Helen's well and truly entitled yeah. to this. She's within her rights. Yep. The, the, ho the hoot is gone. Massive moment in the event. Very interesting to see what she does here. She takes a couple more paces, continues to analyse. I don't think she's too sure. She's uh, She looks like she's in a couple of minds here, Helen Chung. So. Finally strides up, gets into her motion. Oh, I... Helen Chong, we wait. I'm not sure what is happening here, Val. Backhand, I can't really find a shot unless it's some kind of arriving weight down through the front looking for the jack because the kill works. Well, she's gone for it. Backhand. So I think backhand, the only result she's got is to try and kill the end. And I tell you what, she might be finding the gap here. She's not far away. She's cleared out the Australian bowl. And... If they believe they've got shot, it's very close. Helen will make her way up the green and up the rink. Look, we believe it's one to Australia here. We're not so sure. But 
I dare say Allen is going to play this last bowl just in case. Oh, we spoke about the experience of these two Aussies. Dead if, draw. If it's one, they won't play this. And if Allen plays it, I reckon they might think that they're down. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm very confident Australia's got shot, but I'm not getting a lot of confidence out of Christina and Allen. No. So, well, as much as there is a lot of room, there is a little bit of danger. Well, you we don't want to be trailing. Across. You don't want to be trailing that Jack back. So, Karen Murphy just having a look at the Malta Swedish uh, Switzerland score, and now having a look at the Aussie score. I think they might be potentially looking at some extra shots, even if they if Alan draws the shot. Make two, are they, are they looking for a number? I'm not quite sure. Or is it the fact that it is very close for shot? Well, we've, um, we've been throwing a few spanners we here. Have. Val, we this uh, have. This has been a very dramatised morning. It looked like it was going to be routine for the Aussies. And Hong Kong, China have fought back to perfection. Can Alan Ryan just ensure that the Aussies get shot here? It needs to be a dead draw. It's coming. It is coming. Chris, he wants it and urges it. It isn't there, and they did get the one. So it was one to Australia. They left us hanging. They did get the win in the end. But, wow, what a contest. Barry Lester, they win it 17-15 over a spirited angel. So, and Helen Chong, who fought until the very last bowl. What a contest in the end. Yeah, very spirited contest. That's right. Uh, Australia really trying to hang on, play very strategic shots. And in the end, Hong Kong pinched that huge number, second last end, but just couldn't quite finish off. Helen Chung trying to do all she could for her country to play the big bowl to get the win. Couldn't quite get it done. And Australia hold on and keep their hopes alive. They certainly do. And up next, it'll be women's triples action. So Australia's Dawn Heyman, Lindsay Clark and Kelsey Cottrell will be in action uh, Oh, it's just under or in just under an hour's time, about 45 minutes. So like the Bowls Australia Facebook page and put your notifications on and you'll know when we go live. But the Australians, the equation is still simple. They do need Malta to drop a game or drop a result. And Australia just need to keep winning in the women's pairs. Plenty to play for here at the Broadbeach Bowls Club. Val Ferbo and Barry Lester with you, guiding you through all of the action. We'll catch you soon.